All right, I think we can get started. All right, so this session is a panel on accessibility metadata. And we're joined by several panelists. I am going to see if I can pin them so that you can, you can see them all grouped together. And I think while I do that, we can ask them to all introduce themselves. So uh, if somebody would like to get started, let me see. All right, I have, I have a, uh, our panelist names here. So I'm just gonna say, uh, Amanda Lee, would you like to start us off? Sure. Hi, I'm Amanda Lee. I'm a publishing metadata consultant. I work almost exclusively in Onyx. So if you have Onyx questions, I'm your gal. If you want to talk about the metadata within EPUBs, and eh, so-so. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I am also working on the eBound project, which Deb introduced yesterday, which is the Accessible Publishing Learning Network. So if you have any questions about that or want to be involved in that, I'm also your gal. Uh, I work with publishers small through to large on their metadata, as well as publishing organizations. So while I am myself not a publishing employee, I have a lot of publishing perspectives sitting in the back of my mind. So that's what I will be bringing to today's panel. Thank you so much. Uh, who would like to go next? I can go next. Uh, so I'm Erin uh, from Redshelf. Um, and if you don't know what Redshelf is, we are a reading system, uh, mostly based in the higher ed space, although we do have some uh, inroads into like, you know, business training, that sort of thing. So um, accessibility metadata has uh, been a huge thing for me for the last few years. So I'm so happy to be able to share what we've done uh, on the panel today, but um, I'm excited to hear what everyone else is doing and learn a little bit more, just kind of how this works internationally too. Kai, would you like to go next? Uh, sure, I just came in. Uh, so can you catch me sorry, up? Sorry, sorry to put you on the spot. We're just <laughs> introducing ourselves. Sure. Uh, my name is Kai. I'm an accessibility analyst uh, for NELS. Um, and so do a lot of testing. But when I'm not doing that, I'm helping out with uh, cataloging. Wonderful. Um, Megan, would you like to go? Hi, I'm Megan. Um, I work at the Center for Equitable Library Access. I am the metadata coordinator. Um, this is a fairly new role that they just created. Um, I started in it in October. And um, I'm probably going to bring a little bit of perspective on DAISY audio, some Braille. I work mostly in MARC, but we also work with Onyx. Um, but I'm mostly here to learn and contribute as much as I can. But uh, I'll just say that um i'm i'll share kind of what we're doing now and i'm always open to hearing um improve what i can do to improve and fix and make things better so wonderful and gregorio hi hi everybody i'm gregorio i work for fondazione elia we are based in italy in milan in the north of italy and um, we have a certification process and our certification is based on metadata so for us it's really important to create distribute and consume metadata so this is my let's say point of view and i try to contribute to the panel great thank you so much everybody um my name is marisa and i'm from the daisy consortium uh, I'm happy to be moderating this panel today. I really look forward to hearing what everybody has to say. Uh, so should we get started with our with our first topic? I think we were going to get a high level overview of the metadata supply chain. Yeah, so maybe I can start then maybe Amanda can help me. I have a flowchart to share with you. Let me check. Okay. Can you see it? Okay, yes. so this is our idea. Uh, it's not really our, but this is the idea of an accessible publishing ecosystem. As you can see, it starts from content creators. Uh, so in this slide, we have a chart with the different actors of the value chain of uh, digital publishing, accessible digital publishing. And we start from content creators, then the distributors, aggregators, and so on. Uh, then the platforms for uh, 
selling or for lending content. Then we have the devices and the reading apps. Uh, one important thing is that, uh, um, and we can see in this other slide, the metadata is the only uh, information that flows from one actor to the other. Uh, sometimes uh, happen that for, for example, uh, online digital uh, bookstores or um, digital libraries don't even get the file itself because the file is stored on the aggregator servers and so on, but they get the metadata and are the metadata that are shown to the end user. So uh, since the metadata is the only thing that flows from one actor to another, is super important to embed accessibility information in those metadata to help the end user to understand uh, what they are buying or lending or so on. I don't know if Amanda wants to add something, Andy. Yeah, that looks great. Uh, I agree that it, getting the metadata is of course really important because it does flow everywhere. But it's interesting to me that frequently we forget that within the creation of the metadata step, there are actually several steps from the publisher end, right? They, you know, that very first step on Gregorio's chart here where it's just ebook plus metadata, before that, the publisher needs to determine what are the accessibility features of any given ebook and where best do I store that information. So I consider those sort of step 0.5 of the supply chain. Figure out what the accessibility features are, figure out where to put them, put them there, then step two, which is distribution. Great, thank you so much for that overview. So uh, next, I think we want to talk about this, you know, this very beginning uh, metadata creation. Um, the question is, how do you incorporate accessibility metadata? Well, I'll, uh, I'll jump in and start first, just because the publishers with whom I work, you know, that's, they're creating the metadata, that's where they start. And for many of them, there's a big challenge around both the Onyx metadata and the metadata in the EPUB file themselves, just as I alluded to, they have to determine what those accessibility features are before they can talk about them. So in order to incorporate accessibility metadata, they need to have a workflow that allows them to speak with the producers of the ebook, whether that's in-house or third party. And in Canada, it's frequently third party. Uh, I can't speak to other nationalities, but here we do a lot of third party ebook production. And then once they've determined what the features are, I know at least the Onyx metadata is sometimes added directly to the database and then it's sent out from there just as all the other metadata it's not different you know I think often it's sort of we think of it as accessibility metadata and metadata in terms of onyx it isn't it's a product feature just like saying your print book has 182 pages and it's got flaps on it so from my perspective as someone who works in onyx it's as simple as learning what it is adding it to your database I would say in the US, a definitely big third party piece there as well. Um, you know, that's where a lot of that targeting of the certification of that workflow comes in, making sure that everybody in that whole process is, is certified. And I think what our publishers really seem to struggle with, at least in the higher ed space, is um, when we first started looking at including accessibility metadata, something we could display to consumers, we started with Onyx and we just weren't finding a lot of it in the Onyx feed. And um, you know that's why we sort of made that radical shift to kind of pull both, but rely more on the EPUB metadata. So you know it's it's interesting to to see how that has kind of played out over the last few years. Yeah, I have so many thoughts about that, Erin, that I would yeah. love to discuss <laughs> with you. But let's let's hold that one until you know a later question, perhaps. <laughs> well, uh, in Italy, uh, our uh, process for certifying eBooks. Uh, does the um, complex work for metadating the the ebooks so uh, we receive the ebooks from for from publishers we have a checklist with more than 40 uh, different tasks and so we validate the ebooks and uh, the output from the validation are actually the metadata so we uh, we then send back to the publishers th those metadata, only accessibility metadata, both in EPUB metadata and in Onyx, and they distribute uh, them. 
uh, this is quite important from for our model because in this way we are the authoritative uh, party for metadata uh, all the metadata in italy are consistent because we produce for uh, the world uh, the all publishers and in this way all refers to our website where we have the certification and every user can check if the that particular book is okay or not so now getting into the the different formats i've heard uh people mention mark and onyx how do these different schemes uh compare in their support for accessibility metadata um i could start maybe a bit on that um i guess so with sila we produce and we also distribute uh accessible resources um so we do uh, work with onyx and we then create mark records to get the resources or to send out to public library partners um so for our mark records uh i find i've been looking for some sort of standardization of how accessibility metadata is incorporated into mark and i've looked at a lot of other accessible libraries to see how they're incorporating these fields but it is a bit of a wild west out there and uh, um everyone does it a bit differently so it's um i think there's lots of room in mark to incorporate uh, descriptions and features and and uh, there's flexibility in that sense, but that also creates a bit of uh, inconsistency. With Onyx, I'm finding that um, it's just more structured and it, we're able to, the language is um, pretty well defined in terms of how it's described. So um, yeah, that's, that's what I noticed. So Megan, are you doing almost a crosswalk from the Onyx data that you're getting into a mark record? Is that something you've figured out how to make work? Not yet, but I'm okay. looking at it. Yeah, yeah we're okay. getting I was that. like, have you talked to me, please? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're looking at it um, right now. Like we're not parsing um, accessibility fields or the product form uh, feature fields from the Onyx that we get from suppliers. And we also create our own Onyx. So that's kind of on our roadmap is let's parse it from our suppliers and then start adding it if we are creating the resource ourselves. Um, and then from there, I think there should be a pretty quick like crosswalk for the accessibility fields in particular, because in Mark, there's only there's about two fields. There's 532 and 341. And um, I think uh, there could be like just some consistency in language between the what Onyx uh, has and what Mark has. So like full audio, yes, uh, we could easily put that into the Mark fields and um, and the way that the DAISY specs are kind of uh, stylized, like just make that more interchangeable. I think that would be really useful, but um, we're not quite at the, the crosswalk point yet, but we're hoping to get there. Yeah. Cool. That's really cool. So should we move on and talk a little bit about the supply chain journey? So once you have authored and created this metadata, what happens to it? As we saw from uh, the helpful diagram from Gregorio, it has quite a journey ahead of it. And the goal, it's I feel like it's like a some kind of game show where the goal is to like get it to the end of the chain in one piece. <laughs> so how do you do that? Yeah, so uh, it's like a um, broken telephone game. I, I don't know <laughs> if you know that particular game. So um, maybe Amanda can say something about the, the distribution itself of metadata. And I can add then something about issues that we have found. So please, Amanda, start. Yeah. Uh, broken telephone is just a perfect uh, description of the metadata supply chain, I'm sorry to say just like I said, publishers put it in their database and they press the big button that says distribute or they send it in a spreadsheet to someone else who presses the big button that says distribute. And then it goes into the ether and you can maybe go check on some websites to see if it's taken, but you can never really be sure that what you're sending is what's arriving, especially with the big players like Amazon, it can be very, very challenging. So from the publisher perspective of the supply chain, we press the magic button, and maybe the magic spell works and maybe it doesn't but i we're we're working on that we're working on making that better yeah uh, what we've found implementing uh, this ecosystem in italy 
uh, is that there are there may be some issues so for example the first one from content creators is that sometimes content creators use the same ESPN for different formats I know that it should not be done but it happened and so you cannot uh, attach accessibility metadata on that particular ESPN, because if the same ESPN refers to an EPUB or a PDF, as you know, uh, the, the accessibility features may be really, really different. So this is the first issues we, we faced. The second is that uh, sometimes um, um, back office system don't have uh, the fields in their database to store accessibility metadata. They are quite few, and so normally who implements those software are not focused on accessibility metadata, and they have to do some work to receive those metadata. Then when they receive the metadata and are able to pack them and to distribute them, it may happen that bookstores or online libraries are not able to ingest the metadata because they are not ready to do so, and then the, the big problem, but for that we have, a, a, let's say, solution. Uh, they don't understand how to display those metadata because some of those are really geeky, are really for nerds of uh, digital publishing. And so uh, it is quite, di quite difficult to understand how to interpret the metadata and to display to end users. So ESBNs, databases, and display to end users. Yeah, I can say that those two of those things were something that we certainly struggled with. Um, we uh, obviously we received Onyx feed from our publishers, but uh, we also know that it, the metadata lives inside the EPUB um, in a lot of cases. And um, it, it was like, okay, well, we know we can rely on the Onyx feed and we use Daisy Ace to pull metadata out of EPUB, specifically accessibility um, metadata. But it was like, where do we put it? We're, okay, so that that's we kind of had to like we have this grand plan of oh we're going to launch this thing and then I was like oh wait <laughs> now we got to kind of go backwards and say we're we need to set the a way up to display it and then being involved in like creating those standards around how it should be displayed um, was really helpful for us um, and we you know follow that as as closely as we can based on the information that we get but those are two definitely two big um, stumbling blocks for us because we had a completely different idea of how it might be displayed initially. And then we thought, well, why would we want to do this sort of um, in a vacuum? And that's why, you know, we got Daisy involved in the conversation too. Like, shouldn't we have some kind of a standard here? Um, and, um, and so now we do have a standard. So that was great. It's, and, and then everyone can follow it, right? At least, at least on our side, um, you know, and hopefully it'll, it'll start to move itself around to other avenues where people can say, oh, hey, here's this metadata that I'm getting. Maybe I should display it like other folks are displaying it, so. Yeah, maybe, <clears throat> I think we were gonna also discuss a little bit later, but but maybe now would be a time to drop a link into the chat to this standard for displaying metadata. Does anybody have it handy? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hopefully that, you know, this, uh, the development of this document will help people understand what they should do with this accessibility metadata and that it is important to expose it to the user. Um, should we move on to talking about metadata consumption, how how the user interacts with this information once they see it displayed? And, and so what value does this metadata bring to users? So I guess I'll uh, jump in here uh, since I'm pretty much talking from the perspective of uh, a user. Um, and I think it is really helpful, um, especially in an academic uh, setting where you're looking at uh, accessible content and making sure that all the materials uh, that the student is using is accessible. So in that sense, um, there's a lot of value there. Uh, but also from a student's perspective, um, knowing that uh, textbooks uh, can be pretty expensive, um, I think it really helps to know whether the um, book has image descriptions and other features that you need uh, before you buy, uh, can kind of avoid that headache of 
um, oh, I, you know, I just bought the book and then I paid like a hundred bucks. And now I have to talk to the um, company the, to, to kind of uh, ask for a refund because the book isn't accessible and find another way to, um, to, to be able to kind of fix uh, or to get my money back and to find another way to um, make the book accessible. Uh, so I think there's a lot of value there. Yeah, definitely. This That's can... kind of similar on our end, you know, uh, because one of the, I, I know a lot of uh, higher ed institutions, is especially the in the accessibility space, um, they're a little bit afraid of EPUB still for some reason. Um, and I, you know, we, we're constantly fighting that battle, but it, it's, it's a little bit easier for them to understand when they see that information attached to a book. Okay, all right, well, this has gone through some kind of a workflow certification and uh, it's compliant to this. And so, you know, maybe it's not so scary. Maybe I should have my students try EPUB. Um, so uh, that's helped move the needle a little bit for us. Uh, it also helps on the adoption side of things too. So if you can demonstrate to professors, faculty, bookstore managers who are making choices like that, um, that, that you really should choose the EPUB and this is why, and here it is in black and white um, over, you know, maybe a PDF that doesn't have that kind of capabilities that will go a long way in helping those accessibility offices. So it's just kind of this whole full circle thing. So I have a question. What would be a great example of displaying useful metadata at a point in the you know, user experience? So like the portal through which somebody is purchasing a book, what types of things do you as a user look for that would signal to you like, hey, you know, this book seems promising in its accessibility. Yeah, um, I think for me, I'm looking for image descriptions, um, kind of good book structure uh, for navigation, um, making sure that it's reflowable. Um, if, if I do see a book that uh, maybe uh, does not indicate that it's uh, reflowable, then it, it's a pretty good sign that generally it's not as accessible for me as it could be. Um, so I think in, in that sense, um, that's usually how I look at it. Uh, for, for the most part, I think because of uh, the content that I wanna consume, um, even if I don't see all the accessibility features I want, um, I, I'm still probably gonna try it unless it costs a lot um, and figure out a way to make it accessible uh, because in, in certain cases, you know, I just have to get the information from that book, whether it's accessible or not. Um, and I don't really have much choice. Um, but I, I think um, th those are the things that I pretty much look for. Um, and it, you know, it, it's really cool to see uh, that a lot of um, this information is now starting to be exposed. Um, you know, just to kind of talk a little bit about uh, things from the Nels side. Um, we're uh, displaying accessibility metadata uh, on our um, record pages for the different titles. And we're showing whether it's reflowable or not, whether it has image descriptions or not, um, whether there's uh, navigation in terms of headings, which is one of the uh, main features I think I talked about yesterday where a lot of users gravitate to. Um, so things like that. And, and I think that's a really good um, starting point um, and, and I say that because there's still um, a little bit of inconsistency in terms of, uh, you know, what users expect and what the metadata shows. Um, so I think that's, that's where uh, there should be a little bit more focus as well. And, and so what are some challenges when it comes to using and displaying metadata to its fullest extent? What are some of the uncertainties in this space? Um, so I, I guess I'll, I'll start again. Um, and for me, what I found uh, just helping out with cataloging is that um, the metadata in the EPUB itself uh, that, that I guess we're using, um, there, there's inconsistencies in terms of identifying uh, image descriptions or saying that this book has image descriptions because when I actually look at an image description, I'm expecting something that gives me enough detail to be able to use it properly along with the text, right? But 
sometimes um, I see a book uh, that says it has an image description or it has image descriptions and the alt text is not quite there. Um, technically, it does contain alt text, but uh, all you're seeing are logos and, uh, you know, for the book cover, it's saying the title, uh, which I guess it's helpful, but it's not, you know, giving me more as a user than what I'm expecting. And so, you know, I feel it's a little bit of a letdown. Uh, and so, I think, um, yeah, I think um, getting this accessibility metadata is really a starting point. Kai, you're being very diplomatic in your description of this bad alt text. Uh, this, I think, is one of the challenges of accessibility checking is that you can automate, is there alt text, but you can't automate, is it good? So this, I think, for me, really reinforces the value of manual checking in addition to automated and i know we hear this within accessibility we say this over and over but uh, i think that maybe not everybody has caught up um <clears throat> are there certain metadata fields that are must-haves i know we've talked a little bit about this already but are there uh maybe even being more specific like um using terminology from the specifications are there certain fields that you know you would uh, definitely must have i think the most helpful one for us is the screen reader friendly uh, for sure um you know sure the the certification is important but again that whole idea of the the reading order and how you can navigate through the title too extremely important um but i think the one that we get asked about most often is screen reader friendly just to add something to screen reader friendly, it is not actually um, um, a single metadata, but it is a combination of different metadata telling that the user can access the whole content using a screen reader. So there are images description, the content is structured, uh, everything is available as text uh, and so on. So it's a different combination. And this is what we have tried to explain in the user experience uh, guide to display metadata. So to combine different metadata to say screen reader friend. I think it's a very good point about the book cover too. I know we've talked about this in our in our daisy meeting sometimes about how you know it, it shouldn't just say book cover or title. Like it really should be descriptive of it's not any different than any other image. Um, and, you know if a student is saying hey I'm using this purple book and, and you know someone who doesn't have the affordance of sight doesn't know that they're using a purple book like it's you know it's a different experience so um yeah that's something i've tried to encourage us to get more into describing our book covers but we again that's another thing we kind of have to rely on publishers to help us with you know and, and that's the other issue we have with metadata sometimes we just don't get it um, I'll just add to that in terms of the library side of things with Mark. Um, for us, we always add technical uh, requirements and playback specifications. Um, and we'll always add usually the structure and navigation, like um, like access and uh, access by headings and pages information. Um, and then the DAISY specification as well. That's for DAISY audio. But for Braille, we do a few other things. We contracted or uncontracted. We have the UAB grade and system requirements if it's electronic braille. But um, again, it's I think speaks to kind of through the supply chain, does it get displayed in the library's catalog or not um, is another question. So we can give it to the libraries, but some of them might just remove it or do what they, what they will. So. Mm -hmm. And before we move on to our next topic, um, are there any other recommendations uh, regarding searching metadata? It, it, things that might be useful to have, say, if you are using a portal to you know, uh, scan the contents of a library or a bookstore, what types of search facets make a difference? Yeah, I think um, for me, it's a lot of the same features that I look for when I'm looking at a record. Um, the I think one of the really cool things that um, Nels has been working on with this accessibility metadata is also being able to search. And so um, it, it's really cool. Um, and I definitely encourage you to 
try it out um, where I can enter a title and then I can search uh, for image descriptions or uh, what we're calling customized display, uh, which is reflowable or fixed. Um, and, you know, I, I think that is really helpful, but um, I think I think the other thing to point out too, uh, just kind of going back a little bit with the whole screen reader friendly, um, I guess, uh, announcement uh, on, on a record page, um, you know, because it's a combination of all these uh, different uh, characteristics that make the book accessible to a screen reader, um, you know, having that label um, could be helpful uh, for, um, I think, for people who don't really know exactly the terminology or uh, the all the specific characteristics that you're looking for, um, you know, because I, I look at a lot of EPUBs, you know, I'm familiar with uh, some of this, but um, yeah, I think just making sure that everything is displayed in, you know, an a easily, um, like, friendly with friendly labels uh, is really important going forward. All right, well, moving on into our final topic. This, uh, we can look at news, what's new in this space, and also looking forward, what is coming up. And so what are some of the advances that you've noticed in the last year uh, related to accessibility metadata? I can think of one for sure that I think we already touched on, but maybe somebody wants to talk a little bit about it. Well, I see a lot more of the larger publishers having their workflow certified a lot more in the last year because um, there were just a few big ones in the, uh, doing it at first. Now there's a, a lot of folks getting on board and asking us questions about it. Like we're not a certified authority, obviously, but we can point them in the right direction. But the fact that even small publishers are starting to ask us about it means that the word's getting out there that people want to make accessible EPUBs because there are certainly people who are ma making not accessible EPUBs as well. So um, yeah, I think that that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good development. Yeah, that's great. And so much of certification relies on metadata which I think uh, Gregorio mentioned. And we also have the user experience guide, which um, we have a link in the chat from earlier, which is, uh, I think it was new this year and should be extremely helpful to help people interpret metadata. So everyone, please check that out. Um, and what are some things that you're looking forward to or, or what's coming up? in the near future that you, you know, you want to talk, talk about? I think we are going to update the user experience metadata because we had feedback. And so we will try to improve it in this year. So next year. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. I'm looking forward to trying to figure out how to leverage this metadata in different ways. Um, you know, internally for, for our partners and uh, campuses. So that's my big project this year. I know that Catalyst has been talking about displaying uh, on accessibility metadata, which, you know, for them, they don't actually even have the EPUB, so they can't work with the EPUB metadata. So this is a really good step for them. And I hope to see more non-retailers like Catalyst who don't have the EPUB use that Onyx metadata in that way. And uh, I really hope, and I know Catalyst knows what they're doing, so I hope that they use the display guide because it's really, really functional and super useful. And this is just a dream, but I do think that now that this display guide exists and is so easy to use, the publishers could consider exposing that metadata on their own websites. Uh, just, and then that would also train them to think about their accessibility metadata, you know, go audit it on your website, make sure it's correct and think about it a little more. I really, I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the growth in the display space. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, especially if you're, you know, you, let's say a, a salesperson has approached you on a campus about using a particular title. 
Um, if they're educated about metadata, they can point you to that on the publisher side. Like, yes, it might be a brand new title that maybe we wouldn't have for them to look at. Uh, I wouldn't have that metadata to show them at the point of adoption either. So yeah, that, that's a really good one. I like that one. Um, I'll just add that I'm hoping, and maybe this is also a dream, but I don't think it is. I think there's some talk about developing standards for uh, incorporating accessibility metadata in MARC. And I know, I think ABC and the IFLA were working on a project related to that. And um, so I'm hoping to kind of tap into that, but I really want to get the ball rolling and start thinking about how we can incorporate it in a more consistent way across the board. And so if anyone's interested in and working on some big project like that, I'm totally all ears and I would love to be involved. So. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I think we've got one more uh, question and, and I'm going to ask Gregoria to talk about the European Accessibility Act. And then I want to be sure to leave a few minutes for questions because we are running into the end of our session. Sure, but I will be this super is important. short. Yeah. So um for the european accessibility act uh, it is mandatory to display uh, accessibility metadata to end user uh, so as ka uh, highlighted before to uh, let the user to understand if that particular book fit his or her needs so it is too, super important but but for displaying accessibility metadata publishers have to create the the accessibility metadata to distribute them and online bookstores and digital libraries have to display them so the supply chain is super important but for the end user it is mandatory to have it before buying or borrowing a book that's all thank you that's really exciting and important to look forward to and uh, and i feel like the work done in this space thus far and the expertise that you all have can really inform the successful implementation going forward. So I think we have time for a couple of questions. I did see a hand earlier from Emma. Yeah, that was me. Um, I just have a quick question. I guess it'll probably be more for you, Amanda. Um, with the learning network, are you compiling a list of all of the vendors that are displaying um, accessibility metadata right now? Um, I know that Redshelf and DeMarc do, but I haven't been able to get like a really concrete list of of who's displaying it and exactly how i think the publishers really want when they ask they want screenshots and yeah and something that they can yeah. follow it's on our it's on our list of resources to build for the aplm and i'm really excited to see it it's it has not yet been created but it is it will exist even if it only has three places on it if all it says is red shelf to mark and catalyst well and yes yeah. at least it says those four right. places Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Hopefully it says way more than that. Let's all just cross our fingers that it's yeah. going to have a million things, but. <laughs> oh, yes. Good point. Thanks, Rachel. In the chat points out vital source. Sorry, vital source. Oh, yeah. I slipped up. Any more questions? Feel free to raise your hand. Oh, here we have um, Halil. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, I'm Monica Halil. I'm head of the Accessible Books Consortium, which has been mentioned several times um, the past couple of days. I just wanted to respond to Megan, who had suggested that uh, we were conducting a study on accessibility metadata. We're, we're not at the moment. Um, we're quite um, concerned about accessibility metadata, given that we have a huge catalog of titles uh, from over 100 libraries for the blind around the world. Um, but Victoria Owen, who sits on the ABC board, um, is involved in a study for accessibility metadata with CARL, the Canadian Association of Research Libraries, I think is the acronym, as well as ARL, which is the American Research, uh, American Research Libraries, is conducting a metadata study. So if you, Megan, if you wanted to get in touch with her, I can introduce you if you wish, if you don't already know her. But the study, Great, and you. she's also she also sits on the IFLA um, libraries with print disabilities um, section uh, uh, okay. section. She's involved there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's great to know about. I love having everybody in one spot. You know, we can share information. Uh, and this conference is great for that. 
So before we wrap up, any other, any final thoughts from our panelists or any more questions from the rest of our participants? Well, I will take a moment just to say that I work with a lot of publishers and I would say every new publisher I've worked with, whether it's someone new to the staff or someone I'm training, has expressed knowledge of and interest in starting to share their accessibility metadata. So this is on publishers' mind. I think it can be easy to like, oh, publishers don't send this, but we're working on it. We're getting there. We're going to send it. Sure, because it also means for publisher to share their effort for accessibility. And since they are already doing it, only uh, also being able to marketing it to end user is super important, not only for disabled users, but for everyone. Agreed. And, and how do publishers receive feedback about their accessibility efforts once they've put something out into the world? Like we heard from Kai, sometimes uh, it's not good. How, how are some ways that users can communicate back to publishers? Well, uh, usually in the metadata, uh, it, the publisher can put a link to a specific page for with contact information or a page to the certifier. So uh, through the certifier or directly to the publisher, uh, using the metadata, the user can reach the publisher if that metadata is present. Mm -hmm. And for users with slightly less technical ability or understanding, you know, if you can get to their website and fill out the contact us form, publishers will respond. They do care. Mm -hmm. They want mm -hmm. they want to fix this problem. So just contact them. They'll they'll they might not fix it right away, but you'll put a seed in their mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we no, we often that's... get questions that we have to forward on to publishers or put um campuses and in, in contact with with publishers you know good feedback bad, bad feedback otherwise so uh from our end it's always a good idea to, to know who to point them to you know because if they want to give feedback we want to be able to allow them to do that no that's nice to hear that you know we can keep the communication open and that publishers really do want to do right so that's that's encouraging to hear Great. Well, I think, um, I don't know if they're going to just whisk us back into the main room automatically or, okay, great. They're closing the breakout rooms now and everybody can come back into the main room. So thank you so much, everybody. This was really great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Marisa. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.